This is exactly right. Welcome to My Favorite Murder. This is the mini-sode. Where we read you your shit. You write to us. We read it aloud. You've got us trained. Yeah. Let's stop pretending. <laughs> you want to go first? I can, but do you want to change it up and go first, since I always go first? I can. Do you have a good ender? Ender? Yes. Okay, let's do that then. Okay, this one's called Badass Granny with Badass Stories. Yes. This one's totally for you. Um, hola, I am nearly 60, no time for chit chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> you all are my spirit daughters. Steven is fine too. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. She got you right off the bat. That hurts, Stephen. Just can I just say this? You can do that to me. Mm, maybe you could visit doing it to Georgia. <laughs> Don't do it to Stephen. Don't do it. He's our little porcelain kitten. That's right. Uh, that's all. He, my grandkid, Minnie Murderinos, told me uh, I need to tell you all a couple stories and suggested the subject line. In the early 90s, I joined the YMCA located downtown in a Midwestern capital city. Oh, she's like, not even going to tell us where she Just is. tell us. We've been to all of them. <laughs> Truly. I was psyched to go to the gym before work like an adult. I arrived <laughs> for my first day of health and the front doors are locked, but it's definitely open. I can see healthy people inside doing health things. What the fuck? So I began to walk around this city. City-sized block building in the pre-dawn, clutching my coffee mug in one hand, my work clothes in the other, looking for a way in. As I'm questing, a random man comes strolling down the sidewalk, presumably going about his random business. We exchange mumbled good mornings. It's the Midwest where it's only not rude to say... Wait, I don't even know how to read this. It's hint. only not rude to not say good morning if, if it's, it's a whole herd of city people. So you don't have to say um, good morning to everybody, but if there's one other person, you have to. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. As he passes me, he reaches back and grabs my fucking ass from behind, no. right up between my legs, all the way to fucking Christmas. No! <laughs> all the way to Christmas. M motherfucker. Uh, I lost my shit. I swung around and started beating him about the face with my mug, screaming, <laughs> I have your face in my head and I will kill you. <laughs> Over and over until he turned and ran the fuck away. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> then it says Thermos Brand Mugs, circa 1990. Super sturdy, great lids. Yeah. <laughs> From a cut murder. <laughs> um, then I then immediately found the Y entrance, of course, I roll, and marched right in there, jacked up like cocaine Kathy, livid they didn't inform me about an early morning entrance, thus endangering my fucking life and exposing me to pre-dawn perverts. The desk. <laughs> so she basically just took her rage at being assaulted on the street and barfed it all over everybody that works at the Y. Yes, but all I right. see her point. It's like you're going to make people go. She's upset down weird alleys to find the entrance and not tell people. Sure, whatever. sure. Um, the desk, de the desk dude seems super concerned and kept asking me if I'm sure I'm okay. I'm like, yes, I'm fucking okay, but you people, etc. So mm -hmm. she was doing what She's you love. Okay. <laughs> I stomp on down to the women's locker room, steam surely rolling off of me in my wake, um, to see multiple reflections of uh, in the mirrors of blood spattered on my face and torso. What? That's why the kid was so concerned. This shocked me back into myself, and I realized that the entire time I was beating on this perv, I was reaching up over my head. I'm 5'3". He was that much bigger than me. I made him bleed and run. I was fucking delighted to realize <laughs> that all the abuse from my past had consolidated into one big ball of rage, <laughs> looking for a target. <laughs> How I avoided getting his blood on my work clothes, I don't know. It was a minor miracle. Stay sexy and always carry a quality coffee mug. <laughs> Just call me bad granny. P.S. My coffee mug was still full, but I did not drink that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Dude. So the guy, when she came in to be like, yeah, your back door isn't open or whatever, sh she looks like Carrie. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. So, and like probably he took her seriously. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah, this is what happens. Yes. I'll fucking, you're next. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Rampage it up. Grandmas. 
Subject line of this is the wrong way to tube. Hello. I've been listening for a few months n- now and have stopped doing everything else. So it has been nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and people here love to go to the dirty ass lakes and go tubing. Yes. Now that I'm older and have a sense of health in the South, we were just raised to, quote, rub some dirt in it. I realize that nothing good comes from playing in the lake. <laughs> I once saw a body with a headshot <gasps> wound wash up on shore, but that is not the story because... Because that is all I know about that. Oh, my God. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Wow. You could Google it. (laughs) I was out tubing with my dad, uncles, and brothers when I was 12. They had all been drinking all day, so we figured it was time to go back in. I wanted to ride the tube back in, but luckily kept my life jacket on, even though we weren't going to be going very fast. My dad decided to gun it, and I flew off backwards. Mm. The rope had way too much slack. So, like some final destination shit, the rope wrapped around my (gasps) legs, waist, neck, and face. The boat began to drag me under while also constricting me, (gasps) and I started to lose consciousness after what felt like nine hours, but in reality was 20 seconds or so. I felt two arms lift me up, and I was taken over to the boat. My dad, being a first responder, checked me over quickly and was laughing the whole time. (laughs) No! No! Yes, those natty lights make shit hilarious. That's what it's like. It's no big deal to them. (sighs) Both of my parents were like, you could have an open bleeding wound and they'd be like, one moment. (laughs) No matter what. They just were not in any way moved by what is to every other normal human being an emergency. You have to do so much more to qualify for an emergency. (laughs) Like, it has to be exposed bone. Yeah. Okay. Laughing the whole time. Any of us kids... uh, Uh, got hurt he always remained calm so as not to freak us out it's a blessing and a curse because now i do not think anything is a big enough deal like that time i had (laughs) like that time i had a brain tumor removed i thought i would be back at work by monday oh my god (laughs) and my surgery was tuesday the tuesday before didn't make that anyway i finally came to all the way and we just enjoyed the rest of our night i went to school monday and we were talking about what we had done that weekend i had really gnarly marks and rope burns so i was showing my friends next thing i know i'm being called to the principal's office where the school counselor and a social worker began questioning me about my home life thank god someone's fucking paying attention (laughs) to problems god bless that staff they thought my dad had purposefully done this and it was a giant mess it all ended up sorted and i went tubing a few weeks later (laughs) can't wait to see you in dallas as a stgm and when tubing hang on for your fucking life taylor wow that's (laughs) scary that's the thing about that I never think about that I'm sure parents think about constantly which is not just you don't want your kid to get hurt but when your kid gets hurt Mm -hmm. people always have to assume you may have a hand in it yeah like there's so much risk yeah yeah and kids say stupid shit all the time they don't know what they're talking about mommy hurt me I don't know yes exactly or some weird combination I love to do stuff like that I loved to say things I'd heard adults saying yeah uh, thinking it made me sound older and smart (laughs) when actually I was like busting six people at a time oh my and no idea what you were talking about Mm -hmm. okay this one's called fuck politeness great aloha Karen Georgia Stephen and furry friends A classic. A classic right off the bat, opening strong. A few months ago, I had a weird run-in. I was on my way back to my old apartment after work. I'm a dancer at a strip club in Honolulu. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was the first Friday of the month. I used to live right outside Chinatown, and every first Friday, all the art galleries and bars in Chinatown all have events going on and an art walk. Since most people are partying in Chinatown, I decided to leave work early and enjoy a bottle of wine with my boyfriend. People are partying in Chinatown instead of going to the strip club. She made. <laughs> she's she's jealous of the business Chinatown's getting. Yeah, uh, I took the bus home, and uh, I know it's not the best decision, but I grew up in Honolulu. Buses are okay, right? And like the idiot I am, would walk to my old apartment after partying till bars closed in Chinatown. So I felt reasonably safe, especially since it was the first Friday and there was more t- foot traffic than usual. Also, because I'm a dancer and will change into something sexy at work, I was uh, wearing 
wearing pajamas and looked crazy in the combo of sweatpants <laughs> and a full face of stage makeup. Yes. There is nothing like that. The best. It's so weird. The only thing that's better than that is if for some reason, this has happened to me a couple times, you have to, your hair is curled. Yeah. Like if you have hairsprayed full hair yeah. makeup, but then you're just wearing the dumpiest sweats in that's, the world. You feel like you're a Las Vegas showgirl. Yeah, that's right. right. Um, when I was probably five minutes away from where I used to live, a car pulled up, a car pulled over beside me. And this is like, I'm reading this because it's so crazy. I'd never even thought of this. Um, it was an old man trying to talk to me. So I paused whatever podcast I was listening to so I could hear what he was saying. I thought he was going to ask for directions, but the guy said, miss, someone is following you. I responded with what the fuck where and looked around to see literally no one. He then told me that the guy was hiding in the bushes and that he can drive me wherever I'm going. Oh no. I know. What do you do? I look around again and I don't see any other people or nearby bushes. <laughs> uh, I refused the ride and the man insisted that I was not safe. They, my, uh, then my inner Chinatown rat came out and I told the man, I'm, no, I'm fine. I've got pepper spray on me. It's on my keychain, which I already had out. And if the pepper spray doesn't work, I'll club the fucker with my seven inch heels, which I pulled out of my bag and started waving around like a lunatic. Yes. He then drove away and I got home safely. My boyfriend made it to my apartment with no run-ins because this type of shit doesn't happen to men. <laughs> Stay sexy and don't get in cars with strangers, Kayla. Yes, Kayla. Isn't that weird? Like, I have never thought of that. Someone's following you. Let me help you. And you're like, get in. Yes. Because you're reacting to your, the assumption is if they're telling you something like that, they're automatically good. Right. Which, of course, that's logical. It's like, right. you have to just hang out for a second to and what put if, two and two together. And what if it is true? What, what if do? it is true? I mean, that's the creepiest thing of all is old man and he's hiding now. Yeah. Of course, because that's natural. That's what would happen. Yeah. Scary. Oh, Kayla, you nailed it. Kayla, thank you for letting us all know. Yes, because there sh you should have a thing on your person that enables you to not have to get into a car. Right. If possible. Pepper spray is a great. It's always a different situation. Yeah. But she... That was ideal. Yes. Also, I imagine those plexiglass shoes. Yes. There's like specialty dancer shoes. Yes. That are dangerous. They're like weapons. Good. Hooray. <laughs> that was inspiring. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. <laughs> this subject line will give it away. Hello, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and furry friends. See? Great. Everybody likes it. Everyone's on board. I'm from Bakersfield, California, where a lot of crazy shit goes down. Oh, we know. Here in Los <laughs> Angeles, we are very aware of Bakersfield. Oh, uh, we talk about Bakersfield. That's all we talk about. Behind its back <laughs> every day. But there was one story in particular that I felt needed to be shared. It was quite a crazy story, especially since the woman involved was pretty well known in town. So one evening, this doctor shows up to her on again, off again boyfriend's house, but he wouldn't let her in because he didn't want to see her. He leaves out the back door and stays the night elsewhere. She then attempts to break into his house, first by trying to use a shovel to get into the back door, but then proceeded to break in by sliding down the chimney feet first. No, 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 no. 
That plan didn't work out so well for her because she got stuck (gasps) and ended up dying of (gasps) suffocation. When she didn't show up for work the next day, her staff was like, what the fuck, and reported her missing. Her body was found three days later when the house sitter smelled something funky coming from the fireplace. Firefighters spent five hours demolishing the chimney to get her body (gasps) out. Stay sexy and never try to break in your boyfriend's house by sliding down the chimney. Rachel. What? That's got to be the worst way to go. It's so terrible. Terrible. Poor woman. But, Why didn't he want to see her? Uh, well, I mean, who knows? Who knows? That all of that is like d- it chimney. feels like there's story. Yeah. But that also happened to somebody in LA recently. And there was the story of remember the guy that was like um a uh, a burglar that was running in a vault yes. and went into the column. Yes. And it's basically same accident version of this. Yeah. Where he fell into a column yeah. and couldn't get out and just was trapped in Oh side. God. I horrible. Don't want any of it. Just the worst. Please. No. Don't stay away from all of these things. Stay away from things. So you know what? If someone doesn't want you in their house, yeah, yeah. if they're like, no, you can't come in, yeah. that's the end of the story but, from you in that house. Yeah. I mean, sure, try the back door. We've all been crazy. <laughs> We've all been crazy ex-girlfriends before. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now look, you can crawl under the house. If he's being a it's if it's on him, he's being a dick. Get into that. To, you need crawl to go space. in and get your whatever. <laughs> Fine. You need to bring some lime and sprinkle it over yourself and die in his crawl space. Fine. Then fine. Oh, Jesus. Okay. This is called Grandma Kept What in Her Freezer? Oh, yes. I'm all about grandmas today. Greetings, to MFM humans and animals. That's a good Gr- one. Greetings. Greetings. Huge fan of your podcast and sad I missed you in Des Moines. That's all. You okay. should be. It was amazing. <laughs> it was so fun. So fun. This isn't technically a found in the wall story, but it was something we found in my grandpa, my grandparents' freezer. Disgusting, sad, or funny. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Yay. My grandpa recently moved into an assisted living facility, so we have been going through and clearing out his house, getting it ready to sell. My mom was going through the freezer and found a small Whitman's chocolate sampler box. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the poor man sees. We know. <laughs> but at least the they have a map. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a map. Whitman, Whitman's has the map. You're right. And I think that's a, a value ab- above rubies. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get you a ruby necklace for Valentine's Day, but... No, just get me Whitman sampler. I got it. Okay. It seemed odd to freeze a small box of chocolates, so out of curiosity, my mom opened the box. Spoiler alert, it wasn't chocolate. <laughs> no. Nope, it was my grandma's two dead beta fish. Carefully, <laughs> carefully tucked into a perfectly folded Kleenex. Oh, she killed them. No. Uh. Um, turns out when the fish died nearly 10 years ago, my grandma didn't have the heart to flush them. So instead, she placed them in the chocolate box and put them in the freezer. <laughs> I'm not sure why a chocolate box in a freezer seemed like a better burial. It seemed like a better idea than burial at sea. But that was my grandma. She always did things a little differently, but always with the best intentions. And always in the freezer. And always in the freezer. <laughs> Unfortunately, she passed away in 2014. And I think grandpa either forgot the fish were in there or he kept them to honor her memory i was the let's first go one go with that sure. one no <laughs> <laughs> that's just exactly who you and i are i'm like let's say it's that you're like it's not well i don't want my memory honored with two dead fish in a chocolate box okay that's fair okay. he didn't get her a gravestone but he got her two, <laughs> but he saved her fish. he refused to bury her body but look at these beta fish yeah <laughs> Um, <laughs> either way, I'm quite disturbed to know I've been eating popsicles that were sitting amongst a couple of dead fish, which yeah. I mean, you freeze fish all the time. It's just not your pets. Yeah, it's usually, I mean, yeah. And then and now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure my mom put them right back where she found them. So who knows where they are, well, where they will end up. SSDGM Mel. <laughs> <laughs> That's so hilarious. I was, the, of course, the first thing I thought of, though, is he had like thousand dollar bills wrapped up in oh that box. yeah because you know the old people and squirreling yes. stuff away send us those emails too yeah send us your weird grandparent stories we just love them we love them and the and the cavalcade of surprises that all everyone's grandparents have yeah wrapped up in an old lunch bag yeah underneath a counter <laughs> Like, just look around. Just see what you can find. Bread bread boxes are a treasure trove. That's right. Especially if it's in a garage. Oh. Like, something from the kitchen that's been put out into the garage. Look through that thing. Okay. Because when I was... The first house we lived in in Petaluma, there was a kitchen set up in the garage. And it was basically when my parents redid the kitchen. Okay. They just took out all his cabinets and put them into the garage and used them in the garage. Uh And I was out there one day fucking around. And I found a lunch bag filled with metal dollhouse furniture 
What? And I still have it to this <gasps> day. You kept it? Oh, yeah. It was like real. It Is was it cool. It was like I reached up. I did stuff like this all the time where I just go through everything. Hell yeah. And I just reached up and I just thought it was because it was in the garage and it was a lunch bag that was all oily. So yeah. I thought it was going to be a bag of nails and screws. Yeah. Like, or garage donuts. shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or just a nice bag of fried chicken that someone cronuts. left there for us. Yeah. Some cronut. But instead it was this like really old and seemingly valuable. Oh although God. I don't think it actually is truly I valuable. I want to see it. Will you bring me just one piece? 100%. I'll bring I, you the little red chair. I, I love have. miniature sh- shit. I mean, I don't know why I don't have a dollhouse. Wait, do you know about the miniature chef that... The my, tiny chef? The tiny chef. I love him so much. Do you know that... My, Laura, my sister, and my niece, Nora, were looking through the Tiny Chef and watching it, and all of a sudden, the Tiny Chef had an MFM thing Oh, we're in best the friends. He comments, the Tiny Chef, go follow him on Instagram. He follows, uh, he says hello to, to Mimi whenever. Oh. He says, blello, Mimi. No! <laughs> but you know that that's the girl, her, his owner is the girl who made us those tiny, our last meals. That's what I said. I told my sister I thought that, yeah. because she said... I think the I think you know the tiny chef. Yes. And I was like, the only way I know the tiny chef is if the tiny chef made us our last he meals. Did. And then she said, but were they vegan meals? Because the tiny chef is vegan. That's right. It's Rachel Larson, right, Stephen? Yeah, it was. But she in the note, it was like, these are the only non-vegan meals I made. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. I know. Yeah. Oh, God, I feel it. OK, I'll tell you something later. Well, the Kilgaris are huge fans. We all are. I'm the tiny I, chef. I just love him. I didn't catch up. I didn't understand yeah. what was happening. Plalo, I will. Plalo, Mimi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mimi is the most special. Mm. Um, OK, this it, it, this subject line gives this away, so I won't read it. Okay. It just starts, okay, so, since Karen likes to get to the meat of things without preamble, I'll jump straight into one of my favorite of my dad's stories. My dad is a retired first responder. All of mine are first responder stories. Nice. We're in themes. Um, He was not there for this event, but from the first time he told it, I've never forgotten. Uh, They had gotten a 911 call for a body in a pool and responded only to find a DOA scene. Mm. The crew did whatever it was supposed to whatever it was they were supposed to do and then helped with the retrieval process they apparently pulled the body out of the water and in the process that compressed whatever air was left out of the body's stomach and lungs and the very dead body said oh no quick anatomy recap i was gonna say autonomy recap (laughs) quick anatomy recap Air moving past the vocal cords makes sound. Mm. The guys dropped the body that just moaned at them back into the pool and ran for it. You think they would have known that, right? I guess I don't know. They were they were new or just hadn't happened to them. It yet. was their first day. It was their all it was six people's first day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't start everybody at once. Not the whole freshman class. <laughs> They came back and finished the job once they calmed down and realized they weren't trapped in their own personal night of the living dead. <laughs> Please pet the cats for me and the fiercely private dogs too. C. P.S. The best story from working in medicine so far is the patient who came in and said to me they needed to see a doctor because their eye bill. <laughs> because their eyeball fell out? No. <laughs> yep. Said to me they needed to see a doctor because their eyeball fell out. It was Halloween. They said they just pushed it back in because they didn't know what else to do. I'm still not over it. Oh, no! I don't like eyeball stories. <laughs> that was a particularly terrible Ooh, one, too. Why did you end on that? Remember when I was like, do you have a good ender? And you're like, yes. Yeah, that's, that's not- the best. <laughs> <laughs> do you have an ender I would like? Oh, I, I didn't realize. I didn't realize. <laughs> But you did the the eyeball killer. That's right. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I just wasn't prepared. Well, you know why? What that's not th- a PS story. That's a top yeah. of the email story. That's a, that's the story. What's the uh, subject line? First responder quote: "What a dead body sounds like." Lighthearted. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a different understanding of the word lighthearted. We all you have different. C. Me and C have a different. I just thought that was funny because it's like, what else are you supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. Keeping in a little Dixie cup? Oh! What would you do? I thought it. I just yes. didn't think it was going to go that way. I pushed it back in. Well, yeah. now we know. You know. It's like a dislocated shoulder. Yeah, you pop just it. Gotta, you just got to pop your eye back in. I can't do that. Can you do it? There you go. Did it? Did you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> 
You got it. Oh, um, um so right after you, th- this is almost over and then it's gonna, <laughs> don't worry. Get ready. Don't worry. And then after this, we're on our feed is the very first episode, the, the very first, it's not a fucking April Fool's joke episode of Jensen and Holes, the murder squad are the new fucking podcast on exactly right. Network. Episode one. It's real. It's happening. Oh. We've waited so long. It's finally happening. Paul Holes is on our fucking network, you guys. And Billy, Billy Jensen. Jensen, whose book I'm listening to right now. Chase, Isn't it good? Uh huh. Chase darkness with me um and uh yeah get billy's book but right now get ready for the debut yeah. episode and go um subscribe because we're just gonna play this first one so everyone hears it on our feed and then go subscribe and you know, rate review subscribe exactly. give them their good ratings so that that podcast does well yeah and here they are jensen and holes oh uh stay sexy oh and don't get murdered bye, bye. elvis you want a cookie <laughs>